Why was Atomic Blonde such a such an exciting prospect for you, the character, the whole story? Um, you know, I was actively looking for a protagonist that could fit in this role, some someone who um, could be unapologetic for who she was, or whether she, or for the fact that she's female. I wanted to explore something that, um, you know, where you could put a woman in this kind of space that has been predominantly owned by men and have her play by the same rules. And I think that was interesting for me. And I, I think I've been like wanting to see that more in, in film. I love going to see movies and I want to see more movies where women are not constantly reminding the audience that they're women. <laughs> Just, you know, having women kind of live in their space and owning their space and being empowered within that space to just be and to exist. I think that was interesting for me. Mm. It also meant, of course, in, in this particular case, that it was a lot of you know, physical stuff you had to do. How brutal was it? Because in some of the scenes, I mean, you got pummeled, but you yeah. pummeled them back. So that's, that's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, I knew what I had to do. And so I went to work, you know, I knew that this was going to be a lot of um, physical stuff that I had to do. And I think it was also the part of the storytelling that really excited me. I wanted to do something that you really kind of had to rely on the physical to kind of forward the story. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew in order to do that in a, in a any way believable way, I had to go and train and try and get as good as I possibly could as a fighter. But weren't there any, you know, moments, nights where you're like, what am I doing to myself? Every night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much every night, yes. Crying yourself to sleep. <laughs> not crying, no. not quite crying, but definitely feeling sorry for <laughs> myself. Yes. No, I was I was pretty bruised and beat up when I went home at night, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I felt very much like the character of Lorraine a lot. <laughs> the time period, 1989, those very interesting weeks when the Berlin Wall came down, was that of interest to you, the, the historic importance of that? Yeah, I thought it was an interesting time and place for a film like this, a spy thriller, to kind of take place because um, the climate was just so interesting, right? And so if you have that kind of hot pot happening, how would it be for MI6 agents and uh, all of these operatives from all over the world to kind of be stuck in one place while this incredible moment was happening and everybody's just kind of gone, I've, I've, I'm done, like I'm not gonna even get those agents out. I think, um, I think it lent itself to a really interesting world and we all really love that. But, but do you remember that, that moment? Because it was yes. so much the promise of you know, the renewed freedom and, and, and the world was com becoming a better place. And politically, we're in a much different and, and almost darker place now. So do you remember that and, and what do you think about it? Yeah, I, I, was, I was very young uh, living in South Africa when this story broke. It was all over the news. Mm -hmm. Everybody was talking about it. It was in every front page of every newspaper. And I think it, it really hit home in South Africa. It really caused serious conversations in South Africa because what was happening with apartheid in South Africa was almost exactly what was happening here. This idea of separation, whether it was through a wall yeah or through a sign that you put outside a bathroom saying whites only. I think those are very similar things, right? Ideology wise. So I think it, you know, I don't think it's a, and um, I think it, it, it's not surprising that two years later, we uh, had our first free, or we had our first free elections five years or six years later, but Nelson Mandela was freed in 91. Mm -hmm. And that whole idea of apartheid was kind of crashed and, um, and, and wiped away. Mm -hmm. the, the time that we live in now, are you optimistic about? I'm always optimistic. Yeah. You have to be, what else are you gonna be? You know, I, I have dark days and I have days where I worry for sure. And I think that's just part of the human condition. But yes, I have to be optimistic. Because I remember we, we, we talked just right after Obama got elected and how big a fan you were and I, I wasn't, I mean, it's different now, yeah. right? Yeah. In, in your well, adopted look, country, uh, the United States. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm very, you know, in my, so um, with no hesitance saying that I'm optimistic, don't mistake me, I'm concerned. I have definitely have concerns. I have concerns for um, a lot of Americans living in America. Uh, you have to somewhat suit this, uh, fit this uh, one size of what an American is, and that worries me because I know that that's not a reality. No. 
And I also, you know, I worry internationally. I, I look, this kind of idea of divide has just never been something that I'm very much a believer of. I, th I think that um, you have to be smarter and intelli more intelligent to kind of handle things that are, um, that involve human condition and the way that this time and this political climate does. Okay, I have a couple of questions from the Swiss outlet. How was it working with Swiss actor Daniel Bernhardt, who played the soldier in your film? Yeah, he's amazing. He's absolutely incredible. Yeah. What did you do in Berlin while shooting? What can you recommend to our viewers that they visit maybe here? Here in Berlin? Yeah. Well, you know, Berlin is a very rich city. And so whether it's the historical places that you want to go and see or just jumping on a bike and cycling through the parks here, this is a city that just doesn't disappoint. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in Switzerland? Are you planning to go there? Um, I have been to Switzerland, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, nice? Yes, very yeah. nice.